Hello, good day, and welcome to Showcase West Gray. I'm Kevin Eccles, the mayor of the municipality of West Gray, and today I have Henry Mangers with me. Henry is a farmer. He's not into horses. He's not into cows. He's not into sheep. He's not into that popular stuff or the more original stuff that we see, livestock business that we see in West Gray. Henry is an alpaca farmer. Right. Right? And Henry, I just want you to tell me, I don't know a whole lot about alpacas other than they're cute little animals that you see. What is an alpaca? Well, an alpaca is a very cute, cuddly, inquisitive, huggable little creature. Uh, actually comes from South America. Right. But its main purpose is for its fiber. It was uh, raised uh, by the Incas in South America about 4,000, 5,000 years ago for its fiber. The llama, which is like a cousin to the alpaca, was mm. their draft animal. It was like their horse. Right. Okay. And so its fiber was, uh, it's coarser, it was used for clothing and so on, but the alpaca fiber is strictly for the royalty, the upper class of that civilization. And it was bred for its fineness. It's very, very, very soft. Soft and, and workable. Well, that's what an alpaca is. They're from South America. Yes. They're a, a spinning fiber and whatnot. Uh, how, did, how, how did a resident of West Gray get into alpaca farming or the alpaca business? Well, I guess rural roots have been in my background. I was okay. born in Southampton, lived in the area. My dad was in all kinds of agriculture, as you said, about dairy and beef <laughs> and so on. And, and when I got my own place, I bought uh, 30 acres, just the site of Hanover. Right. And my day job, I'm a high school teacher. But in the summer, we're off on, on, in, on the land. We like working the land. And uh, I was thinking, but what am I going to do when I retire? And, and school teachers have that problem. They retire well, so early. Yes. <laughs> and they're still healthy and strong. And I thought, what am I going to do? And so I started doing some research. And there's things that I didn't want to do because my dad has had pigs, my dad's had dairy, we've had the beef, traditional mm -hmm. stuff. Right. And I thought, well, I'm not really going to be in it um, as a full time right now. Uh, something I could gradually get into uh, and build up a herd perhaps and use the land. And I actually read an article on alpacas in a Harrowsmith magazine. Okay. It was about late 2000. Mm -hmm. So I started to do some research. And the internet's a great place to get information. And I actually joined an organization called the Alpaca Owners and Breeders Association out of the States. And what that allowed me to do was to have access to their library. And okay. so I could borrow all kinds of material about alpacas and sort of educate myself as much as I could. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in 2001, I was visiting farms uh, around Toronto and I bought my first alpaca. And I they, uh, allowed it to adjust there. Adjustment is like boarding. Okay. And so right. I own the alpaca, but it's raised on their farm and I can go and help out, learn how to work with the toenails and the shearing and all the aspects of husbandry. And it was there for, I think, three or four years. And I gradually built, bought a few more. And then in 2004, we put the barn up at my place, put the fences in, put the pastures in, and brought the herd home. And I've been raising them there ever since. And brought them home. Um, so obviously you've had a, had a number of little alpacas. What's a baby alpaca called? Like okay. a, is it a calf or is yeah. it a... A baby yeah. alpaca is called a cria. C-R-I-A. I should have stayed in Spanish longer when I was in school. Yes, because some of the terms are all Spanish. <laughs> the, uh, there's a humbra, there's a macho. The humbra is the female, macho is the male. Yeah. A tui is a weaned alpaca. Okay. And a maiden is a first-time mom. Ah. So they have their own terms, but, but Cree is a common one for llamas and alpacas. Yeah, the baby alpaca yeah, is called a Cree. Cree. How long is the gestation period? 11 and a half months. Ooh. Almost a year. That's, uh, for a little animal, that's a long yes. gestation period. When you see an alpaca that's shorn, it's very, very narrow in the body. And right. you get to see that there's not a lot of room in there. And it's in the last trimester that you'll see a female actually start to bulge at the sides, indicating as she is pregnant. Right. Uh, because of that narrow birth canal as well, they almost never have twins. Oh, it's okay. very, very rare that an alpaca will have a twin. Hmm. And we have sheep that are just about half the size type of thing, and they have twins, twins triplets, and triplets, and, and yes. the odd yes. quad, if you yep. Uh, yep. get there. But it's very rare. 
Um, now, you, you talked a little bit about toenails and the husbandry, but what's the typical day around with an alpaca? Some breeders will only feed once a day. Okay. I have the habit that I, in the mornings, uh, in the barn, we feed individual feeding with little buckets. Okay. Uh, we don't broadcast feed because we like to control how much each alpaca is getting. Currently, my nursing moms are getting more pellet mixture than their regular moms. And that's because they tend to give their body weight yep. uh, to their feeding. Uh, we do some uh, rolled oats as a high energy booster again to nursing moms. Mm -hmm. We give about 100 grams of pellet mixture every morning to every alpaca. Okay. In the afternoons is when we do the cleanup. So you go out to the pastures, clean up the, the dung piles, clean up the barn, as well as feed again. Okay. And uh, generally that takes about an hour in the afternoon, half hour in the morning. So most days in the summer, it's a, it's a nice leisurely walk out in the pasture, but now with what West Grave, with raining uh, every day, it's probably been a little bit off. A little <laughs> bit, a little bit. Breeding season generally gets to be busier as well because uh, we control which male gets to visit which female. Okay. And right. so and during the there. morning routine is when uh, the alpacas have their own choreography as to where they go to eat. And so okay. I individual feed, they know which pen they're going to go into. And when they're on their individual pens like that is when I can control which male comes to visit. visit. And that can take upwards of half an hour to an hour extra time. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we'll run through what we call a spit check cycle. We want to confirm if the female is maintaining her pregnancy because if she has ovulated, right. progesterone levels are up, she knows that. And she mm -hmm. will not cush or allow herself to be bred by the male. Oh, okay. Um, it gives a bit more time, uh, but at least you have a, 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 a sense of whether or not they're pregnant or not. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you did mention something, uh, you've got to trim the toenails and whatnot, and I imagine that a bit of it comes from being in the mountainous regions of South America, they would have wore them down. Yes. Now we do have a bit of gravel, but we don't have the mountains, the, that the, the is correct. exposure to the rock that they that have is in correct. South America. So Generally we trim shearing? toenails when we shear in the spring. Okay. They're on a shearing table, so they're immobile. It's easy to check their feet at that time. But we can do periodic checks. And some alpacas you can actually pick up their feet and trim them standing like a horse. Okay. Depends how tame they are and how used they are to being handled. Mm -hmm. uh, generally the males are less cooperative than the females has to do with hormones. And, and, a lot of, and a lot of females out there will tell you that's in the general population, it's yes. the same thing. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, you talked about shearing. I know in the sheep industry, we have people that do the shearing. Is, yeah. it, is it the same? Do you do the shearing? or I have learned how to shear, yes. Uh, I've done some shearing courses. I uh, helped with shearing at the other farms. And uh, it's a little bit different than shearing a sheep because we use a table as opposed to standing them up on mm -hmm. the rump. Um, we try to immobilize them, so it's actually a tilting table okay. that we use. Yeah. So that then they're tilted on their side, legs are strapped out, and we have one person holding the head uh, to keep them immobile that way. And then we shear one side, then flip them and shear the other side. side. We do it every May, end of May, early June. Mm -hmm. We take it off ourselves. And the tilt table is somewhat similar to uh, the dairy industry uh, trims cattle, cattle feet on a tilt table. so. I think Something so. Kind of a hydraulic. I think so. Yeah. It, it comes yeah. down, so it'll be yeah. good. But ours are just manual. Yeah. Because we can be a little them. bit smaller. They won't. Yes, because an alpaca is not quite the heavy weight of a, of a dairy cow. And, and speaking of weight, what, how much would a full grown alpaca weigh? Adult females, about 180, 190 pounds. A good, strong adult male, heavy boned, could be 220. Excellent. Excellent. We could probably spend another few hours speaking about this. A fascinating thing, but thank you very much for coming in. You're very welcome. Time's really flowing, and best of luck. Keep up the good work, and I hope to get one of those warm alpaca toques uh, yes. coming up for the winter coming yeah. up. Anyways, thank you very much for coming You're in, welcome. and thank you everybody out there for watching. Please join us next month for another Showcase in West Grey. Goodbye now.